Hello and welcome to One on One. Today we continue our conversation with Michelle Jordan and Anya Yang Chi as we talk about the mother daughter dynamic and uh, both of your work in various fields that are sort of bringing the attention of your public. Welcome back. We didn't go anywhere, so I'm not going to shake hands again. Okay. I want to ask you something, both of you, uh, because you've officially become Anya's mom um, instead of being Michelle. 22 years later. <laughs> Many took, it took a long time in yeah. coming, but you knew it, but the threat was lurking. <laughs> uh, how do you deal with um, and the celebrity, of course, is something you've come to be with. I guess it must be a mixed thing for you because, I mean, you're obviously a Trinidad and Tobago celebrity. Uh, you can't go anywhere without being... Well, even our reporters came to take pictures with you earlier. <laughs> New York, I guess, there's a little more anonymity for you, is there? There is, depending on where I am. Right. If I'm in the garment district and if I go to Mood or if I'm around anything where people obviously are in attuned fashion, to right. Project Runway, particularly. Because Project Runway spans the fashion world to some degree, but more so spans the reality, t reality TV world and it's still considered one of the most successful shows in the history of, of reality TV, or at least in the history of competition reality TV. So um, it always baffles me, like I can go through immigration in, you know, Missouri and some like, you know, middle-aged guy who's sitting at the TSA knows who I am. And it's from that all the way to... you think about him though, wouldn't it, if he follows fashion <laughs> programs? Well, that's the thing. I mean, yeah. it's always shocking, actually. It's always shocking. But, but you, you've got the celebrity and, and yet you have people who've been around a while, who've known both of you and your family for a while, and you've got people I'm going to guess sort of just kind of tagged along when, when they say you redeemed yourself by winning Project Runway, not a term I like, but when you won Project Runway and got that celebrity. How do you sort of differentiate between the two sets of people? I mean, do you see some people as just being there because you're known and you're a celebrity or because they get close to Anya through Michelle or because Michelle is her own sort of celebrity? Her own? How, how do you separate those two kinds of people and be civil to them? Hmm. I, I, I think we'll have two different answers for this. So yeah. Yeah, no, no, I, that's what I think would be interesting. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it, there have been different points, I think, because in the earlier interview when we were speaking, one of the things that occurred to me when you said right after the, uh, right after Annie One Project Runway, and I spoke, I guess, with you publicly mm -hmm. about the tapes and where we were at at that point, and you said you had not you're not accustomed to seeing me angry. Yeah. I think the type of anger you saw and the anger that I felt then was the anger of injustice. And I think that is something that I, I, I live and I, it's very, very real to me. And it, one of the things that, uh, that emotionally I am deeply connected to is injustice. And I felt, of, I felt a great sense of injustice following Anya's win of Project Runway. I, I, one of the things that came up in me was that the injustice of it all. Not, not of Anya's winning Project Runway, but the, it brought back the injustice that, that existed after the leaking of the tapes. Well, and, I, and I, I'll, I'll, I hope I'm not telling tales at a school, but I mean, when you'd come back, I mean, you'd already known you'd won, but you were having the little things at the College of Savannah, or big things towards the end there. Um, and you were doing interviews and stuff, and, and people were talking to you, and kept coming up to you and sort of hugging you, and whatever. And I was standing with Michelle, and Michelle said, I can't believe the hypocrisy of some people. <laughs> some of these people were saying the worst things about Anya not too long ago, and all of a sudden she's the belle of the ball because she's on television. Yeah, people, I, I remember seeing people who were running away from me and now running toward me, and mm. they're bringing friends. <laughs> that, that was, I remember, that, that's a, a, quote of, a quote, you know, a quote from one of our shows. But it was, it was that, yes, Anya spoke in the last interview about accountability, and, but where, to me, and that absolutely is real, and I think accountability, as Anya rightly said, can bring a certain freedom. But my issue with that was where was the accountability of the society? Who was pointing a light? And it was a very hard place for me to be because I'm her mother, so it would, it would appear mm -hmm. to be me just protecting her. But I also thought it needed to be articulated. There, there was, and that came from a place of injustice. That where was the accountability of the society? Where was the accountability of the people who saw those tapes? Where was the accountability of the people who then sent them on, uh, you know, shared them? And, and, and were demeaning and destructive. That also has to be accounted for. And that was where the, I felt a tremendous sense of injustice. I mean, I guess that is also what underlies in so much, in a way, my work in Dawn Man Foundation. Mm -hmm. The lack of accountability of other people in the society for other people. That yes, it's very easy, it's always easy to, to define and to, uh, and to point fingers 
and to articulate something outside of yourself. But where is your accountability for the collective? Where is your accountability for that other human being? Where, is, where are you in this equation? And that is what happens to me all the time with Tall Man. I mean, people are prepared to dismiss an entire group of people in this society. Uh, the, one of the reasons that I, I particularly have chosen young men between 15 and 25, which is our mandate in Tallman, because we have a lot of girls in the program, but that's who we target, is because they are so easily dismissed in this society. I mean, we're taping this in February 2014, after six weeks of some of the worst six weeks in youth and violence issues in this country, in our history, Finland. And, and, and yet we just sort of hop Everyone's so busy go about our everyday again. life. Right. You know, so I think, you know, when it is about how do you differentiate, I have my d very, very difficult moments like that when I just think, where, where, where are all of you? What is happening? How can you live at such a low level of consciousness? And I, I, I'm sorry to sound so high minded, but that really does happen to me. And it is, it is definitely fueled by a sense of, injust a sense of injustice that I'm very attuned to for other people, not only for myself. I mean, in a sense, with, with Annie and the tapes, it became a sort of an other thing. I was taking on something bigger than just her and us as a family. Mm -hmm. And the same for the society. And so there are moments when it is difficult to differentiate. And, and it is difficult to, to discern how to react in a situation or, or not to be reactive and to be bigger. And, uh, it is, it's not, you, I'm navigating it and a lot of times from moment to moment, but with a, a larger sense of, of finding the truth in every moment, not only for myself and for Anya and for my family, but for the society as a whole. And I think if you try to, if you try, because well, you really can't try, but if you, if you work in your totality and, and, and you're working that as a human being as a whole, to find, that in, to find that truth, to live that truth, I think that voice, that, that spirit of truth guides you. And it allows you in every moment to release some people for, their, for where they are, to meet people where they're at. Um, it, 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 uh, it gives you this expansiveness, I think some of which Anya referred to, uh, that allows your spirit to just embrace rather than than, than do the same thing, and that is and dismiss and deny. But the human reality remains. I, if you speak only on that level, it sounds like you're some kind of floating you know, creature mm. that, that is disconnected. And as Annie said, no, you're not disconnected. You're very connected to emotions. The reality of your emotion, emotions are there. And emotions are very, very necessary reality and they need to be embraced, they need to be lived. I, this business of standing aside from your emotions so that you're almost like, you know, like distancing yourself from mm. who you really are. I have a certain difficulty with, um, it's like standing, as, I think you need to stand aside from everything, your, your, your mind, you, 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 you know, you need to stand aside from your emotions. You're not, you need to be, be bigger and beyond all of these elements, but at the same time, you need to be part of them because they are they are defining, you know. Well, they're you. Yeah, they are you. Even so, if you have perspective on you, at least. Yes, you, 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 you need sort of to be both things at the same time. And the real, the only thing that I have found in my life that can that can allow you to embrace your your intelligence, embrace your emotions, but at the same time be larger is to is to find a way that. To, into your own truth and into a deeper truth of the universe. And when those things align, those things guide you in every moment. Anya, is your approach the same or perhaps <laughs> moderated version? Well, it's funny, coming full circle back to the end of what mom says I, about truth is really, I guess, what I would have said. Um, because I feel like there have been moments where as a family we've been through things very much um, alone. Well, not that we are apart from each other, but alone and where we are our, our only refuge is mm -hmm. each other because there is a, there is this sort of, you know, we can put our head, our head on a block for each other. I know that they're not going anywhere. They know I'm not going anywhere. And that's always my point of reference for how do I distinguish between this person or that person having been one way or another in my life. So I know that the people who I can resonate with that truth that, that, that truthfully there is unconditional love and that doesn't that I'm very grateful to say 
is not contained only to my family. I have friends who are that. I have people who have come into my life as recently as the last few years or have been my friends since the beginning of my life, whatever it is. I always return to how do I feel about my brothers and how do they, how do they make me feel? Um, my parents, the same thing. The people who have been there my whole life, that's the same thing. That's my marker of is this person truthfully here for me and me for them or is it a passing cloud? And I, don't, I try to not make judgments of, of either from the standpoint of how I treat these people. I try. Right. Um, can't say it's always successful, but I think that's how I make the distinction of, well, they may have been one way to me five years ago, now they're a whole other way to me because of whatever's happened in my life. And, but I try not to dismiss it, you know? I think that everybody has a role. Everybody comes into your life for a reason of some kind of learning teaching some sort of lesson and sometimes the greatest form of love can come in some form of hatred and I try my best to embrace that as just for what it is you know um, and and I know that makes me sound a little floaty but I um, Maybe it's a but, floaty family. <laughs> but I I don't know I, I, is that I word? it floaty? comes back it to the help. same thing of like shall I walk around every day um, angry or, or judgmental or um, frustrated with the lack of truth, you know, that seems, or the lack of consciousness even, mm -hmm. that, that particularly when I'm home, and I, this is going to sound harsh, but I feel it very much in Trinidad versus when I live anywhere else. I feel the sense of judgment much more here than I do living in New York, let's say, as my other point of reference right now, that I feel, I feel much more judged when I'm home, you know, and that's hard, you know, it's hard when I'm, I'm, Deeply patriotic. You know, I love being Trinbegonian. I, I, I don't see how that cannot be more evident that I, my life, I treat Trinidad as I treat my family. You know? Well, I mean, if, if it has to be said when you, when you did Project Runway and even now with Under the Gun, you don't, ha you don't put on a phony accent as nine out of ten Trinities would do on an American show. Mm -hmm. You're just yourself. You're very grounded mm -hmm. and you're very Trini. And I'm not just myself. I'm decisively Trinbegonian. Mm -hmm. I, um, I'm, I'm, I, I'm proud. I, it sounds like such a trite word, but I am very proud to be Trini. Like, there's nothing else I want to be. I, if I had to choose, I would not choose. It, it's, I'm very, very, very proud. I, I think we're great. <laughs> you know, I, I feel even exotic. If, I even think. if we are judgmental. Well, I mean, the, the best of who we are. But are there certain points where you're thinking, and this applies to both of you, of, on social networking, where you've got like your fan base of people who are following, and somebody will say something incredibly stupid or hurtful, do you have to say to yourself at that point, who is that person to me? Not important. I'm not going to engage. Right. Do you, do you reach that point sometimes? Yeah, absolutely. And Because there are people recently, and I can't even remember what the post was, but people are saying things like, I can't be your friend. And I'm thinking, do you think I'm your kid? <laughs> you, you, she probably doesn't even know you. you know? Um, I find it's, there's X amount of energy that, that I have being human. And I, I really am learning how to decide where do I place it? And I think that if I don't engage that kind of energy, then it not only helps me to conserve energy, but it also helps that person to know that that may, may be, because I think it's kind of a um, reward system in life. Like if someone, like when, you, when, you're, when, you, when you're a child and you do something and it's not necessarily the best behavior, the best thing a parent can do is not engage it. Mm -hmm. Then the child thinks, well, this isn't working, so let me try something else, you know? And that's, maybe, I hope that doesn't sound condescending, but that's really how I feel about it, is if I don't feed it, then maybe it will start to diminish, you know? And I'm just saying the internet, don't feed the trolls. Yeah, you know? But I also think you can do it with readership. You know, I tell Anya that all the time, that I mean, there's certain things, that everything is not going to be favorable, and everything doesn't have to be favorable, and it doesn't, of course, people are entitled to their opinion, and, and, and worthwhile criticism and constructive criticism is valuable. But you're going to also get destructive mm -hmm. pieces written, destructive, uh, um, you know, uh, assessments. And I, I choose not to read it. To me, I, I, my readership is, is precious, and I am not giving my readership to something that I find, I, I, in my view, after one go around, is destructive. Because as, as Annie says, it does, not, it does not help me, it upsets me, mm -hmm. um, because it, 
it, it should upset me. It, 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 otherwise, I'm not, I'm not engaging on an emotional level. And it's, it's not doing that person any good because I'm buying into something that is destructive. And I think you also need that level of discernment. You need that in your life. You need that compass. You know, you need that sense of what is really f allowing or bringing another person into flourishing or it is diminishing them. And that, to me, should be a marker and a guide, irrespective, at all points, for everyone. And it frees you, uh, just to go back just slightly to what Mom was saying earlier about justice and seeking justice in life in every forum, and as best as you can, mm -hmm. that it will be one thing to just talk about it. But what I admire about Mom is that she walks the walk, you know? It's, Tall Man Foundation is real work. Mm -hmm. It's everyday work. It's sleepless nights kind of work. And I think that energy has to be reserved for that. And if that's what you're doing, then you're living by an example and you're living an example. And that's more powerful than engaging and fighting back and, and, and um, Dissipating your defending. Energy. Yeah. And you know, what sense does that make? What, where would that energy be really going? It's just fueling negativity when energy can be placed in generating positivity, generating growth, generating progress. And I think that's why we, as my brothers and I, are the people that we are. Maybe that's why we're entrepreneurs, because we can control where that energy is going. And we can control what kind of businesses are, are becoming the next generation of businesses. And that's the world movement. More and more and more businesses are being built on the solid foundation of what kind of positive energy can we contribute to this world? And how can my everyday life be about that? Not like, okay, well, when I become a billion dollar company, I'll start giving X amount of money. It's really about the, 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 the essence, the mission of what we're all doing. And I, I always, I battle with that every day. How am I, in making clothes, beautiful clothes, clothes that everybody wants to wear and having the individual impact on a woman, feeling the way that a woman feels when they feel beautiful. I think that's in itself, is a positive impact. But how else can my business be essentially in, in sort of, what's the right word, empirically a, 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 a positive one? And I feel like that's, that's why I find even talking about negativity and talking about, well, this one feels that way and that, what do you think about how to that? I mean, I find that a complete waste of time because that's really not how I, I don't even think about that every day. Mm -hmm. I really don't and I, I'm very grateful for that. I think living away from Trinidad gives me that perspective. I consistently look back and think about the best of who we are. It's only ever when I come home I realize, wow, people really read, sort of ruminate about these things, you know? And I just find it such a complete waste of energy. Like, whereas I, I guess maybe going back to the point of how do I discern the people in my life, mm -hmm. I find myself more and more and more, if anything, if there's any area where I'm a bit um, choosy, it's surrounding myself with people who are committed to their personal mission in life and they, they don't let anything sway them from that. And being exposed to more and more successful, quote unquote, people around me because of Wedding Project around me, because of the, the kind of the echelon of people that I have been exposed to, it always surprises me. The last thing they are is petty. The last thing they are is judgmental. The first thing they are is passionate about whatever it is they felt that they feel their purpose in life is, nothing else is getting in the way. And I just, and I don't mean that in a, like, not from the standpoint of, well, get out of the way, I'm going for this. Right. More from the standpoint of how do I embrace everything around me to achieve my God-given gift, you know? And I, that's been so inspiring for me. Michelle. Yeah, I, well, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's all, it, it comes in within in the family context and also in the tall man work. And now in my new role as producer of Jab Malasi, this latest um, project of mine, and I'm also struck because Jab Malasi is uh, has been it's an amazing amazing work, and it's uh, it's high art, and that is the those are the words of Etienne Charles, who of course is a tremendously celebrated uh, jazz musician, Trinidadian. Uh, Trinidadian. Yeah. Uh, it's the um, it's the actual it's a libretto written by a UTT composer here, uh, Caitlin Kaminga, and the music is composed by Dominique Lejean, another incredibly talented Trinidadian, and mm -hmm. the only Trinidadian composer to have ever had her work performed at the Royal Albert Hall in London. So it's on a, an amazing level, 
um, in terms of the, the c composition, but the theme of it goes very much to youth and violence because of the, of the, of the actual story. And it, as a result, um, beneficiaries downstreaming from it are going to be Tolman Foundation, my students. and there, it, There's already been one line of, of beneficiary to UTT students who are part of the workshop and long term is going to Tolman, among others. So it's, it's sort of my life in a, in a loop, you know, in sort of going full circle. But what I can't get over is the, the caliber of collaboration. And I think that's what Annie is speaking to. The, it seems that the more people are committed to their craft, the more people are committed to their art, the more confident they are about who they are and what they are producing, the more concerned they are about their work and the less they are concerned about themselves. And the greater, the more that, that egotistical shift happens, the, the, the more beautiful the experience of collaborating and working, and the more, the more you see this, the, the, the flourishing of, of what you are trying to achieve. It's how I've tried to run to a foundation in building consensus. Mm -hmm. It's where we are going with me at Okay, I'll go ahead and say it, 58, and our children, <laughs> God our children, I was God to protect <laughs> and our children as emerging young people. Now we have become collaborators, and I, and it is, it's, it's not something we're so good at in Trinidad, and I think we're that getting better. Let's we're say, getting yeah. better. No, but I've never seen it's like an organ. I maybe it happens over the breakfast table or dinner table, but it's like a well-oiled, organized machine. The way you've managed to weave everything together. I mean, I saw it during the Project Runway parties where. Tallman was branded using Anya's celebrity, so one was feeding into the other. And of course, Anya, you're part of the Tallman as well. Yes. But it's the way the family sort of integrates everything. And, and it's super organic. I mean, yeah. to say that it's. You've got Anya the Fett, which will also take tall, help Tallman yes. as well. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So the, the Carnival Fett, it's now yeah. called because it's part one part of an entire Carnival experience. Um, is oh, The proceeds go to the Tallman Foundation, and that's. I'm just going to wait for the. Sorry. <laughs> that's habit. Um, um, it, yes, you know, there's, there's always this synergy. I think synergy is really the right word. And Zygon is my brother Eve's um, sound system. That he's really Eve is the crux of all of this. We blame him for everything, because Eve at and 15 celebrate. and celebrates. Um, Eve at 15 started um, DJing, and he, in his entrepreneurial self, was really more of the Chinese laundry in a sense. Right. You know, yeah. like he kind of orchestrated this, this group of his friends, and they started spinning at coconuts. And that's where it all began. That's when I started realizing about this medicine thing that I had on my mind that I was supposed to be a doctor. Um, and it already started shifting yeah, that I was going to become a designer. But either way, it was a big turning point in our family dynamic of who we saw ourselves as, as a whole. And, and, it, and it's really kind of come from there. I don't know if I would be comfortable having a thousand or more people descending on my house to party. I, I, That's our everyday life. <laughs> it's not just then. We grew up in a household where even though there was seven or eight of us, there was just never enough of us. Each of us had five friends every day home from school. We just, you know, we'd carpool everybody back to our house. And that was everyday life. It, it, we, it, in fact, now we have a much quieter kind of everyday lifestyle than we did when... when except the, for the FET. Except for the FET. Yeah. Except for the viewing party. And the viewing except party, for, yeah. you know, yeah. Except for my job event. Except, 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 except. My job event That's tonight. tonight. And, well, they, and, it's and just so like thing after thing. But so the house was designed for yeah, that. It is obviously a house that yeah. was designed for entertaining. Yes. Um, I have to ask you both, just, it may sound like a really simple, foolish question as I fiddle with my earpiece. Um, but at this stage in your life, I mean, you've, you've generational difference, obviously. But I'll ask each of you in turn, are you happy at this stage in your life? Michelle. I was actually saying that to somebody, I think, just earlier this year, I we're meaning a month ago or something, that I don't remember ever being happier. You wow. know, I think I really am. Um, I mean, I, I spent... That's pretty I, impressive at 38. <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention the other number mentioned <laughs> earlier. More accurate one, by the way. Uh, there's, um, I think, in, in a certain way, I put aside my career life to be a career mother and not because I it was just it was so you know I was just so, such a higher being or anything like that it was really that I, I really have a finite capacity and I recognize that and I'm not despite the fact that I'm a woman supposedly a great multitasker that great of a multitasker and I really didn't feel that I could um, I could man I also had five our first five children in seven years so I had a whole 
grap of children, as they right. say. And I really didn't feel that I could balance the whole thing. And I, I, I really needed to focus on my children, just, just coping with these many a young cheese. So that became a focus. But as a result, I, I relinquished my apparent or whatever p potential career. As it was emerging, it wasn't that defined. I did have one sort of incarnation when I opened a business around my children's drawings and created we powers, yeah. created we powers. but it wasn't sustainable. It went its way. It left me quite devastated and with another kind of loss. But uh, in a way, I have this window right now. My my baby is 18, and he's well, he's the rapper, and he's on his own little entrepreneurial journey. I have no one to take to school, no one to make sure they get through exams right now because Will is taking a particular kind of path. And I just feel like I've gotten back my life personally. Now, with no, I mean, I, I feel immensely joyful and grateful for or joyous. Where was the right word? They, oh, it doesn't way, matter. Whatever. It sounded um, good, but you're <laughs> for the many, many 30 years, odd years, I gave to family life. Um, but I, I know, if I'm very honest, they, what, there is this missing part. And really, this missing part is coming back because of my children. They're the ones who pushed me. They're the ones who pushed me out of my comfort zone and said, Mom, get a job, get a life, <laughs> do something. Do, and, you know, and, and I remember one day, I was in my kitchen, and I flung my hand back on my shoulder, and I said, I'm going to look for a job. <laughs> I didn't even know where I was going, you know, but it really got me started again. It sort of like was the jolt that I needed. Well, we're almost and out of time, Michelle, but so that's, you're happy. That I'm happy. <laughs> at 38. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And Anya, just very quickly, I, 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 you seem happy, but you always seem happy, so I can't never tell. That's, that's good. Um, I don't know how to answer this in a sort of, with a lot of pressure, but um, I'm very happy to see mom this way. And I, I just want to say that it, it's such an in incredible example for me being the only girl. It probably has the most resonance with me because at 38, I hope to be in the same place. <laughs> and I always say if I could be a fraction of her, I would be grateful. Um, and I think I would say that I have a sense of liberation, which maybe can equate to a certain kind of happiness. And I think that has come after a couple of years after winning Project Runway, where I've returned and remembered who I am. And I think maybe I'm happy about the course that I'm on. But to say that I'm happy is a sort of a moment to moment experience, if I'm most honest. And that would probably be too comfortable a position for you at this stage of your life. Maybe, yes, exactly. Anya, a pleasure having you in the program again. Thank you very Thank, much. Taking time out of your busy schedule. And Michelle, always wonderful having you on the program. Lovely. Thanks to both Thank of you. you. Very, very, very much. It was Thank wonderful. You. You've been watching 101. Join us again tomorrow for another edition.